You know, I never really watched any anime, and then somebody said, Hey Adam, this show has people flying around with grappling hooks, fighting big naked people eating monsters. And I said, Okay. Hi folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny, nerdy things. Today I'm going to show you how I made what I think is the best scene in all of Attack on Titan. Now, if you've ever watched any of my videos before, you know the very first thing I like to do is make the armature. The two main reasons for this are, one, it gives you something to frame and build off of, as well as giving you proper proportions for most things, and two, well, it goes inside. So if you make it after you've done everything, then, then you need to cut it open so that you can put it inside, I guess? So because he has very, very long arms, I needed to double up the thickest gauge of aluminium wire that I have. So I just wound it using my drill. So you put one end in one side, the other end a clamp of some sorts, and then you turn it on and spin it nice and tight. Then I can frame it up using aluminium foil, and then I've got just a bunch of sort of leftover Fimo clay that I never use for anything. So I'm going to help thicken the body up as well as give it a nice rigid surface underneath. So I'll bake this once, make sure everything looks just about right, then I can start adding in my normal clay. As I always use now, this will be the cause clay because I find it's really nice to work with. And it's also very forgiving for a person like me who likes to drop and bend and break things. Once it's baked, you can usually shape it and move it around without worrying about snapping anything off which is perfect because I can never make up my mind as to how I want these things to look. So what I'm doing now is just refining the shape and giving him his big fat funny belly. For some reason he's got like a great big bloated beer gut and it's adorable, apart from the fact that he's a big spooky ape. But he's got a great big belly and an incredibly jacked sort of top of the gut upwards upper body. So I'll start with framing out the musculoskeletal anatomy. I'll start with the abdominals, and then on the side you've got your serratus anterior, which are the puncher's muscles, and then leading up into the arms, you've got your latissimus dorsi, and then right down the middle of the back, you have your trapezius, which forms the sort of trapezoidal shape leading into your upper neck region. And then leading into the shoulder, you will have your teres major and your teres minor, which connects into your armpit. And then with all of those in place, I'm not worried over much about the actual size of these things because for some reason, anime is big on hilariously expanded muscles. And again, it's a big old monkey, so it probably doesn't matter too much how accurate we are. Now, before I add the muscles of the shoulder, I want to bulk out the armature on the arms because it is going to be an awful lot of weight on the end of the sort of armature our arm, the arm, arm itcher. So I will make sure that I put a lot of aluminium foil on there just to reduce the weight. And then once I've got it all set up, I can attach a couple little hands, which I have just made out of a couple different pieces of aluminium wire. And then I'll hold that in place just using a little bit of green stuff. So this is the Nita tight. Once you mix it up, it'll harden nice and tight to sort of a plastic finish. And then all I need to do is make sure that I scientifically check to make sure that his fingers and his hands look kind of appropriate. And then once I have that sorted out, I can start adding in the muscle. Now, muscle is very sort of dynamic in its movement, and you don't want to have it looking identical on both sides. So you need to have sort of an idea of how the body will move when it's reaching uh, versus when you're pulling your arm back. And there's a couple different ways that you can figure this out. One, you can go to university for four years and get a degree in human kinetics, then decided this a lot more fun during the holidays to try and explain to your friends and family that pursuing a career as an artist on YouTube makes sense. Two, you could take your shirt off and flex in the mirror, bonus points if you have a similar physique. Or three, you can just Google it. Personally, I'm more inclined to believe that number three is probably the best bet here. Now once I've got a general shape that I'm happy with, I'm going to take my Bon Maman alcohol and go over the entire model in a fairly thick layer of alcohol. This will smooth out a lot of the fingerprints that I pressed in there, and it'll also let me add sort of striation to the muscle, which are the little liney dealies. So it gives a little bit more direction to where the muscle would be stretching from. Then we can get started on the hands. I hate hands. 
Well, I mean, I don't hate hands. Like, I, I need to have hands in order to do this sort of thing. It would be really hard to do this if I didn't have hands. But I really hate making hands. I've said it before, and I'll probably say it every single time I make hands, but I really hate making hands. So I'll start with the fingies, and then add the webs in between, and then I'll start to bulk out the fingers so they are a little bit more appropriately sized for the model. And then once I have a thickness that I'm happy with, I will start to add the gnarly knuckles in. I like to make my hands a little more exaggerated than they probably need to be. Now, again, it is a big monkey, so he's got weird hands, but I really like the idea of knobbly, gnarly fingers. And they're more fun to make, and they're a lot more, like they're exaggerated, so I enjoy making my hands look a little weird. Then once the general shape is finished, I can take the shapers and press sort of the finger nail section in so that once I've baked the hand to hold it in place, I can add the big spooky pointy fingernails on afterwards without worrying about crushing the hand at all. Now we're on to his head, and as you can see, he has an itty bitty head on a great big body. So once I've made the general shape, I'll get my little dime bag full of various beads and get two that will serve perfectly as his eyeballs. Then I can shape the face into something that I'm generally happy with. Then using my knife, I'll cut a mouth a little too low and then cut a second mouth a little bit higher. And then I'll make a couple eye sockets to make a thing truly of nightmares. Hopefully the balls will help when I add them. No, they made it worse somehow. So once we add some angry monkey eyebrows, he's starting to look a little bit less horrifying and a little bit more like an angry ape. Now at this point, without any ears or anything like that, he looks... I mean, he's kind of... he's kind of silly humanoid. So if we file his teeth into points, he'll start to look a little less humanoid and a little bit more Kinda like an angry vampire. Once we add those ears in, then he definitely looks like an angry vampire. He kinda looks like a vampire about to transform into a bat and fly away, or like just a proper Nosferatu. But don't worry, we'll give him a little bit of hair and he'll make a perfect monkey. Then we're on to adding the fur. So I have baked the whole body at this point just to make sure that I don't disfigure the shape or the muscles or anything like that. And I probably should have used some bacon bond just to hold this in place so that I didn't need to worry about it sliding around. But the claws clay actually sticks really well to itself, so you don't need to fuss too much as long as you get a pretty solid connection and there's no air bubbles underneath. So I'm going to make sort of a creepy skin suit first. It rubs the lotion on its skin. Then once I've got the head in place, we can get started on making the fur. Now there's several schools of thought as far as making fur is concerned. I tend to go with the one that is the easiest when I have something this big. So I'll start with the end of my sort of spoon tool to make some fairly large cuts. And then I'll come back through later with a smaller one just to refine the shape. Before I do that though, I want to add like a nice Abraham Lincoln beard onto my monkey to make sure that he looks... <laughs> it looks like he has a little beret now, and I just love it. He's so dapper. He's ready for a day out in Paris. Then once we connect the beard to his hair, now it's worth mentioning as well that he's like, for whatever reason, the artists thought, let's make a, a, big, a big spooky gorilla ape beast and give him like the bowl cut you had when you were in grade school when your parents cut your hair for you and they knew how to cut it one way that's the hairstyle he has and i just love it so this is how i refine the fur so after i've gone over the entire thing with the large strokes i'll come back through with the other side of my sculpting tool and very slowly and methodically uh, press some smaller obvious bits in now this took this took hours and I want to say that it was all worth it, except once I finished it, like the fur looks great, but the actual monkey looks really impotent. Like he's got no muscle. So I'm going to go back through and add muscle over all of this fur I just lovingly sculpted. 
So what we'll do is add big chunks and refine the shapes. Now, this is exaggerated, and that's the whole point. Like, he's supposed to be a great big shredded beast titan. So I'm going to go over everywhere that his muscle would really stand out, and I'm going to try and shape it into obvious muscle shape. And then once I have the shape that I'm after, I can add the fur in sort of the same way that I did before, except I'm going to shape it in such a way that it sort of keeps the shape of the muscle. So I'm going to make all the lines on his chest going downwards. The uh, triceps and the biceps will both go to the center of both of those. And while I'm at it, I'm also gonna make his beard a little bit bigger. And for what it's worth, I mean, the bigger strokes actually look kind of cool, but once I go back through and do everything for a second time, he's looking a lot more buff. He's looking a lot spookier. And he's looking a lot more muscly. And then the last stage before he does his final bake and we're on to painting is I need to cut his arms. So where Levi comes through and does his choppy choppy, I want to have some obvious cuts there because I plan to fill those with sort of blood gouts, I guess we'll call them. So I want to have something that I can fill afterwards. Then we're on to the painting. He's pretty easy to paint. Uh, the trick here is probably to use an airbrush, but because I wasn't sure if an airbrush was going to be able to get into all these little divots and cracks, I just used some pretty fairly watered down Paint. Now, I didn't want to have to do 10,000 coats with the really crappy paints, so I'm actually using my expensive Vallejo miniature paints, and even then, with the lighter skin tones, I did have to do about three or four coats just to get it to go over top. Uh, might have been smart to do an undercoat with the cheaper stuff and then go over with the uh, more expensive stuff, but hindsight being what it is, I mean, I don't paint minis that often anyways, so why not use the good stuff? This is where I tried to get fancy and started to do some highlighting. So I mixed a little bit of lighter colors in to the other colors I was using as sort of the base coat to add a little bit of highlight where light would hit. I have no idea what I'm doing. Still getting a handle on things, so it turned out Pretty okay, but it's another one of these skills that I will learn as I go along. Then I filled in the gaps with a little bit of blood red, so that when I add in the filler, it's there's no obvious gray showing, and then a quick dry brush over everything for the uh, fur. Then we're on to painting the face, and this is where the face starts to stand out properly, so we'll give him some nice, shiny, well-brushed teeth. Then he gets some very black eyes with itty bitty teeny red pupils. To make the blood, we're going to make a mix of isopropyl alcohol, some red ink, and some clear silicone caulking, which you mix up. You, you, like, you really mix it up so that you get a consistency you're after. And then once you have something you're sort of happy with, you can stick it into the gaps that we've cut before and then build it up until I have sort of the shape that I'm after. I want to build it up on the sides so that it's obvious that the cut has come from the left and sort of the blood is shooting out to the right and vice versa all the way down the arm. Now obviously because it's a titan and Levi is one of the smallest characters in the entire show, uh, having to make him appropriately sized for the titan proved to be a bit of a challenge. So he ended up being roughly 20 millimeters head to toe. Now anytime I've worked with Super Sculpey to make miniatures, I've always set a base with green stuff, which you then apply the Super Sculpey onto, but I find it with Cosclay, it's sticky enough that you don't need to worry about it. But if you are going to use Super Sculpey, put a base of green stuff and then apply a thin layer of Sculpey, let the green stuff cure, and then you can start working from there. Now at this point, I've started adding all the bits and pieces working from the bottom up. So I've started with his boots, his straps, his little kilt dress wrap thing underneath, and then we'll make this shirt and once that's finished, we're on to the most important part of his entire outfit. What's that? A cravat. Then I'll build up the rest of his jacket and get on to adding the best part of any miniature build, and that's the cape. There are not enough capes in the world to sate my hunger for cape making. 
So I made him a tiny cape with a little bit around the collar, which will be sort of the built up hood, I suppose. And then that will get pressed into place and I will shape it before baking the entire thing to make sure that it's held in place. Then I can start adding his ODM gear, which are various circles and bits and pieces onto the belt area. And using a tiny bit of wire, I will poke some holes into places that I will want to connect the wire afterwards. This wire will be what connects the ODM gear to his swords. And then the ODM gear and his swords are just made out of some plastic card and some aluminum wire, which I cut and shaped and then glued on just using some super glue. Now, because I've added plastic card in here, I don't want to put it back in the oven because it's not a good idea to put plastic in the oven. So instead we'll use green stuff for the hands and any final things like the hilt of the sword and the little straps around the ODM gear. Then once he's got a coat of primer, we're on to painting him. Now this is one of those scenarios where I really wish I had better paint brushes because all of my paint brushes have little hooks on the end and I've yet to figure out how to prevent that from happening. Now it might be because I've got sort of fairly cheap brushes, but I can't bring myself to buy particularly fancy expensive ones. So I make do with what I have and blame my tools instead of just getting better. For whatever reason, his, his face is coated in blood in this scene, even though the rest of him is not. And I don't know if this is one of those sort of anime things that I don't fully understand. You know, like the, the great big water droplet when they're nervous, like is a face covered in blood, not actually blood, like is he blushing or something? Don't know. This is me trying to freehand the little symbol on the back and it's fine, as long as you're not looking closely at it, but it's teeny tiny, so you really ought not to be looking close at it. And then finally, to attach the swords to the ODM gear, I've cut a couple little pieces of wire, which I've stuck into the back, which those pre-made holes work perfectly for, and then just glued it onto the sword. Then I'll go to my cotton ball collection and pick the finest selection of fluffy white I can find, and then pull off some very, very thin strands. I'll need maybe four or five of these strands. These will serve as the sort of a wind effect from where Levi has flown past doing his Levi thing of chopping and dismembering. And I want to create sort of a cyclone-y, spirally effect. So I'll, just using some PVA glue, loop it around so that it passes over everywhere that the sword would cut. So if the blood is gushing to the right, then I want that sort of trail of smoke or vapor to pass on the left hand side and then the only thing left to do is to mount Levi on here so I'll drill a tiny hole Nobody panic. I was deliberate. And then I jammed a thicker piece of the wire up the back side of his ODM gear not not anywhere else just went into the ODM gear and then I'll cover that in a little bit of PVA glue and then it gets its own little trail of vapor to hide the wire so that you can't actually see the mounting and it also adds to his sort of pew bouncing off effect and then i'll fluff up what's here so it gives it a nice fluffy look and then the last thing to do is to make the base now i had a couple options as far as how i wanted to do this and i decided maybe simple would be best so i cut out a little piece that roughly follows the shape of the titan's body and then using some more PVA and some more cotton, I'm gonna add sort of a smoky vapor effect around his belly. So when these guys die or get cut, or when they get blood in the sun, I think it is, uh, all their blood turns to vapor. Like when they die, they vaporize. So that's what I went with here. And with that finished, we're on to the glamour shots.
there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this one. This was a lot of fun to make. A lot of people have been asking me for something anime-esque, so I thought I would do the only anime that I actually know. Apart from a Studio Ghibli, and I should probably do something Studio Ghibli at some point in the not-too-distant future. But at any rate, I want to take a moment to thank my newest patrons, uh, Nikki D, Josie Lo Presti, Christina, Josh Foreman, Paul Gast, and Callie Echo. You join the ranks of a number of wonderful people who are working hard to ensure that I have food in my belly and the mental wherewithal to keep making silly videos about tiny nerdy things. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. And if you would like to be a patron as well, you can find a link in the description or if you're looking for a more concrete way of helping the channel, then I sell every single piece that I make. I enjoy making it, but they just gather dust on my shelf otherwise. So if you would like to own any single piece of art, we'll call this, then you can find the link to my email in the description below. First and foremost though, I will always accept currency in the form of comments, likes, and new subscriptions, or continuing subscriptions. Don't think just because you are a continuing subscriber, I don't love you with my whole heart. Otherwise, we will see you back here next Friday for something different. Cheers.